Hi everyone, welcome to Value. So today we're going to look at New Providence Acquisition Corporation. This company is selling at $11.50 and it is at a 330 million valuation. So this is a company that has set up a merger with a company called AST uh, Space Mobile, which is a very, very interesting uh, company, which does uh, satellite broadband um for mobile phones so if you know about starlink you'll know about their project to basically commercialize the broadband industry um and this company is doing i think very similar except they're doing it with the mobile broadband situation so it is a very very interesting concept that if they can actually achieve it could really propel the valuation of this company so if we look at some of the details around this merger so AST is going public through the uh, New Providence acquisition um, and the terms of this deal is that once they merge it will be a 1.4 billion valuation uh, though currently the SPAC is selling at a 15% um, premium so you would have to adjust this by that 15% so it's just over that uh, probably around about 1.7 billion valuation if you buy at this valuation right now um, and basically the transaction is, is expected to put 462 million into uh, space mobile uh, or ASD and basically 232 million will come from the SPAC and then the rest of the money will come from Rakuten, Vodafone, American Tower, and USB, uh, UBS. Um, and the fact that, and what probably stands out is that Vodafone is a big investor in this company, so it really, really looks quite interesting. Now, when we look at this company, um, we kind of do perceive some risks, so anything to do with space, I mean, there is going to be some risks to be taken, but if they achieve that, then this company looks very very attractive they hope to have satellites um 20 launched in 2022 uh so in basically the next two years so next year you probably won't see much happen so like you can buy into this company but it's going to be a very patient type of wait unless the short-term price moves up to kind of compensate for that uh, in anticipation of this company going commercial in 2023 uh, when they hope to have about 110 satellites up and basically um, they hope to have about um, yeah about 67 million in revenue from equ equatorial revenues and in the global revenues they are having about 114 million which would give them 181 million in the year 2023 which is about three years time so if you buy into this and you can wait three years and everything goes smoothly so we know that usual case things don't really go that smoothly so uh, expect some delays but potentially if they don't have delays or it maybe is pushed out by months or another year um, but still then you still end up with something that could be potentially really really valuable why do I say it's going to be really really valuable because a year later their revenues are expected to go over a billion dollars so you can see, kind of see that valuation um, is going to skyrocket the minute they can achieve these targets and in a year later 2.6 billion dollars in 2025 then what's amazing is by 2026 they expect 5.8 billion dollars and then after that they expect 9.6 billion by the year 2027 and then 12 billion then 14 billion and 16 billion uh, which is the crazy crazy prediction um, that this company has actually set um, up uh, but of course there is a lot of risk when it comes to space and there is a chance that Starlink could just decide to come and overlap them on this mobile kind of territorial uh, particularly with SpaceX um, having the ability to just launch so many satellites all at once there, there is some risk that space uh, yeah like Starlink overlaps this uh, but if it doesn't uh, and it leaves this company alone and they're able to really grow these revenues like this 
then you potentially have a very very valuable company that in the space of seven years or even longer um, you could basically end up with a 50 to 100 billion dollar company which is the really really grand type vision but as i say you know shoot for the stars if you don't land on the oh it was like shoot for the moon and if you don't get there you land on the stars or something um, so potentially you end up with a company that's still very very valuable um, at the current uh, 1.7 billion valuation even if they get to like 17 billion uh, in the next five years then potentially you end up with 10, uh, a 10x on your money so again this one really requires a lot of patience unless the market just runs it up early because there's a lot of excitement around what it does uh, but yeah, these revenues are incredible. Um, but of course, we have to just um, just recognize that there is quite a bit of risk, particularly in what they do. But where there's risk, there's a high return for uh, the risk you take. So they hope to um, have monthly average plans for the users, for people in US and Europe, at $7.62. And they hope to supply mobile broadband to a large part of the world that doesn't actually have any connections right now or they have really bad connections and they're just going to charge about a dollar and a dollar 68 for those users because they're not generally very wealthy areas so they have to give out uh they have to give out the lower uh, plans and here's our uh, projected subscription 9 million for 2023 44 million by 2024, 108 by 2025, 234 million users by 2026, and 373 by 2027. So those are ambitious, ambitious numbers. But their view is if people are in these areas that they can't actually get any uh, proper uh, internet connection, then they're going to really want to join up with this company and hence why they think there's going to be a massive amount of signups. So initially they expect to do 20 satellites and, and then 45 after that, then another 45, then finish it off by going to 58 satellites and that should basically cover the whole globe. Um, and it should set this company on its way. Um, so that's the basic uh, idea, support uh, they they have they'll have enough cash as they expect from this current uh, merger to get to phase one, which will uh, basically uh, support the continuation of this company as they continue to release more and more satellites. All right, so as they say for phase one, they hope to cover 1.6 billion people. Uh, out of that 1.6 billion people, there is over 700 million people that are not connected to the internet through um, any means. So it kind of uh, gives them, well, in terms of mobile means anyway. Um, well, even then, like they might not even have a uh, connection through computers. So uh, that becomes a big, big addressable market. Hence why they think they can sign up a lot of customers because there's... Um, several hundred million people without a connection currently and if they can supply it at a dollar per month uh, potentially they end up with a lot of customers um, and I pointed out the markets that they want to target um, so you've got like India uh, Democratic Republic of Congo T Tanzania Kenya Ghana Peru and in Indonesia Nigeria Brazil Colombia Venezuela, so you really get the idea that most of these countries aren't exactly that developed that they you would probably benefit from such a service and in terms of partners uh, they have some uh, pretty you know standard partners in this space like Vodafone, AT&T um, and yeah a lot of overseas partners um, in the below mentioned countries so you can kind of get a fair idea of what this company is about. They are about basically sending satellites into space, providing coverage to areas where there is no uh, current coverage for mobile uh, broadband. And in, yeah, by offering at such a good pricing, uh, they potentially uh, get a large market share 
and they earn a ton of money and the valuation of this company skyrockets from this 1.7 billion to potentially a hundred billion dollar company in the next seven years which would be really really incredible but of course they have to execute and usually execution is the hardest part but if they think they only need about a hundred uh and 10 satellites to really get the business going into commercial then potentially um this isn't too hard to do and they could potentially reach that uh milestone i was looking at this uh part where they were talking about how much money they would need to uh get there so here they have a project uh, expected total project costs and they expect it to be 510 million dollars and to cover the whole globe about 1.7 billion so it is a very costly exercise that not everyone's going to do and hence why these guys potentially have an advantage over other people that they raise the money they do it early and hence it might be difficult for anyone else to catch up afterwards um, so they kind of compare against the current systems where it might cost you about a thousand dollars to kind of get broadband in some really remote areas today with the terminal um, and then uh, you would have to spend billions and you'd need thousands of satellites and it would just be really really costly while these guys um, smash, they hope to have low earth orbit a low earth orbit network and they hope to do it with uh, pennies on the dollar 510 million to start off with and as we already know they're already getting uh, a, a, quite a decent amount of money 462 million and that should get them on their way and then after that they can earn enough money to just continue to release more satellites into space and after that they will be fine to just continue to fund themselves and the valuation will be massive for them uh, like they are after all targeting a trillion dollar market so it's going to be a very very interesting market for them so as it's put you know like um there's three areas that they are that are being targeted right now and we have spacex here that does starlink um and basically uh they don't see themselves as having any competitors in the space that is targeting mobile phones so hence why they believe they're the only ones going after this right now and it's a huge opportunity that if they succeed uh everyone is going to win because you're if you're a shareholder you get a massive increase in your share price if you're someone living in a remote area that you don't actually have a decent mobile connection then you win by getting a connection and at a very decent cost as well so uh, let me know what your thoughts about this company is i personally do like it a lot though i still you still need to be very wary about the risks and a really really long time frame that you might have to be in this company to do really really well uh but you know as we kind of look at like say tesla it takes a long time to build a beautiful company and for those that are really interested in a company like starlink uh this is kind of like the alternative to get in early with a company going with satellites and trying to supply the whole world with broadband in a very very new and unconventional way um until then uh good luck investing everyone